Hey everyone, Immersity AI just announced a new version of their platform, which is for transforming 2D images and videos into 3D in multiple formats. I used to add these to a lot of my earlier videos at the end as just a fun thing to look at, but it also got a bit costly for me with my tiny subscriber count, so please, like and subscribe. So with the new Immersity 4.0 version that came out, let's look at what's changed or what's so much better about it. First thing that I have to say, this image they use on their site as the main example is, um, very suggestive. Take it as you will, but that's definitely what's going on here. It does, however, look great. Looking at this image example of the Samurai and comparing the old version 3 to the new 4.0, you can see a huge improvement. The big difference being the stretch. When you look especially around his left arm in the 3.0 version, you get the background stretching and squishing a lot. Though it's not non-existent, this is mostly removed with the new 4.0. This is by using what Immersity calls their natural depth rendering. In their words, This new technology intelligently processes an image into distinct layers, creating smoother camera transitions and a more accurate sense of depth. By rendering foreground and background elements separately, Immersity 4.0 eliminates inaccuracies in your depth animations. And as you can see here, it can be used for the basic 2D to 3D motion, which is what I mainly used it for. But you also have the option of bringing in a 2D video and converting it to a 3D video as shown here. This allows you to output side-by-side -side or anaglyph. I'd love to show you how great this works, but until I can afford my own Apple Vision Pro, donations are always welcome. You can't see me right now, but I just gave you a wink. And the other type of output you can do is a simple 2D to 3D image. It's the same thing as the video, just a static image. Oh, there is one other type of output they offer, and it's to create an Apple Music style album cover. Doing the same thing as the 2D to 3D motion, just that it's in whatever format I guess is needed for Apple Music. I see this as being quite the niche use case. But for those few that would use it, I'm sure it's great. So let's log in and take a look. And here's where I ran into the first problem. They recommend using the spyware ridden browser Google Chrome, which I will never put on my computer. So as usual, I'm using Brave Browser, which is a Chromium based browser as is Chrome, that is 100 times more secure without the spyware that Chrome has. Should be no problem, right? Nope, wrong. When I attempt to drag and drop an image, I get this WebGL not detected. Please update your browser or use a browser supporting WebGL. So it seems Immersity is using non-standard software to run part of their site, making it so that you can't use your browser of choice. This includes if you try to manually upload an image instead of dragging and dropping too. I even updated to the newest version of Brave Browser, even though I updated it two days ago and still a no. So on to Safari. Still, much better than Chrome, but not as good as Brave. Trying once again and uploading the first image, and it seems to be working with no problems. It always says it's going to take a while, but surprisingly, it never does. It's actually pretty quick. And this is a preview, where we're stuck looking at the animated image with the watermarks all over it. But it looks pretty good, and better than it would have with 3.0, that's for sure. But there's still some definite issues. The dog looks like a cardboard cutout, and it created some random wall just to the right of the window that definitely isn't there. Aside from the nitpicking, it did a pretty good job. Let's take a look at another. And it looks like dragging and dropping doesn't work here to switch to a different image, so you have to hit the upload button and then confirm that you want to discord the work that you've done. This next image is pretty disappointing. If it weren't for the leaves and flowers at the very bottom of the image, I'd think it was just stretching and squishing the image to make it move. Okay, this image on the other hand looks amazing. This was what I was hoping for when trying this out again. It's still not perfect, but you have to be looking for flaws in order to find them. And here, you can see that it also works well with a few of the other motion styles. Here's Dolly. Here's Zoom. And because, why not, here's zoom left. The dock looks, well, fine, I guess. 
It's a bit disappointing though. Once it gets to the third post, all idea of depth is gone with any movement and it just looks like a regular image moving around. The closer to the foreground looks pretty good though. I understand there shouldn't be as much change the further in depth it goes, but it seems like there's a cutoff where it just suddenly stops doing anything. This image of a military man holding his baby does a decent job. The main problem here is that the resolution of the original image is so low, 500 by 500, that immersity doesn't have much to work with and you get really obvious and jagged edges on the depth changes. This next one, the beagle in the snow, is my favorite. This one turned out immaculate. Still a few small problems, but damn this cute little guy really stands out. Switching back to 3.0, especially looking at his left ear where it's next to the snow and brown plants, you see a ton of stretching going on. Back to 4.0, it's incredible how much better this looks now. Now of course, I couldn't make a video without a picture of my girlfriend being used as an example. So here's Natalia horse riding. Looking cute as ever. Switching quickly to 3.0, you can see the same issue with the stretching if you look around the neck of the horse where it's touching the concrete wall or step. And back, it looks great once again. When you export, one of the other options you have is just the depth map that is used to create the 3D effect. You can export this and use it in an application like After Effects or DaVinci Resolve. So what does this cost? Well, it's free! if you don't mind having a watermark on every single output. But if you are using credits, 60 credits removes the watermark, allows for commercial use, and up to 720p resolution. This also allows you to output 10 different versions from the single image. So if you want to try the dolly or zoom instead of the perspective or whatever, you can try up to 10 different versions. Going up to the 120 credits, it's all the exact same as the 60 credits except you get up to 10 megapixel resolution, which is just a bit over 4K. Now, because I did not pay for the service, I was unable to see how many credits the videos actually cost. Though the paid tiers page gives an idea of what you get for the credits. I'll let you take a look and see what you get from each of them, where you can see how many credits you get. At the top, it says they have image plans and video plans, but really, they're all the exact same. Only difference is how many credits you get for how much you pay. Anyway, I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to leave a comment. I would appreciate it if you would like this video, subscribe for more of my amazing content, share this video with others so they can know such greatness. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.